since that last video, um, when we did all the repairs to the electrical system, haven't had any issues with the drive system acting out. Uh, I've been running the machine um, for the last month or so, uh, making a few projects here and there, haven't had any issues, so I, I think we got that pretty well sorted out. Um, had a little time, and I worked on the Telstock some just to get it cleaned up and uh, ready to be put into service, and got me a couple of chucks. Got a Jacob Super Chuck 14 in, a uh, half inch chuck, and then 11 in, which is a little 3 8 inch chuck. Basically, I just took this apart, cleaned it up with mineral spirits. I didn't give it a, a super thorough cleaning because it wasn't that dirty to begin with. It actually operated pretty smoothly. And no real surprises inside. Just took it apart, cleaned it, put it back together, lubed it. And after I had it all cleaned and back together, um, I went ahead and drew out in CAD the shapes for the uh, way wipers for the front and rear and for the quill and uh, just used a little trick with a scanner and um, drew on top of the scan image, cut them out on the laser cutter, and we'll just kind of go through that process real quick. So you take your parts, put them on a flatbed scanner with a ruler, and then import that image into your favorite CAD program. Here I'm using DraftSight. Uh, it's by Desalt System, the same company that makes SolidWorks, and this is available free. And They do have a pro version, but uh, I've always just used the free one. Works just like AutoCAD, and most of the controls are the same and you just draw your circles right on top of your parts. Uh, there's a little bit of image distortion but I laid the parts out symmetrically and everything ended up working out right. Um, down here I'm just uh, using a series of uh, I think I used arcs on here. Pull those off to the side you know you can get some dimensions for reference um, but then basically this is just a quickie CAD file for the laser cutter. So let's take a look at that. It's my original part. It's my first test cut just on a piece of cardboard with a laser cutter. Fits in there pretty tight. Got a little bit of overhang in the center. So I think that'll be good. It looks like our original thickness is working on 3 16 Probably was originally. This one's a good bit compressed. Here we go with some F5 felt. This is a Granger part number, but I got it from Zorro Tools for uh, less money. So we'll see how this cuts. Hopefully this won't stink too bad. I'm gonna go over and set our Z. what settings so we'll go we'll run what we've run and keep it with the same as for the cardboard getting through. Alright. Yep. So drop that guy in there. Fits pretty well. I think once it compresses it'll perform the wiping action that it needs to do. You can see the little crusties come off and are reveal good foam underneath. So I think this is a viable option. Um, good way to cut it. Right, so here's our parts. A pretty good fit. I think I'll call those good. Thickness seems to be right. You know, a little bit hanging down. 
press in there. Here's the original pieces. This is the uh, original Monarch multi-layer rubber felt uh, material. So I just wanted to show this little piece. You can see that the edge of it, that's essentially, I mean it's burned hair. So it kind of sticks together and it's cauterized looking. But all you have to do is take your finger, rough it up a little bit, and it just crumbles right off. You can't even feel the texture, it's just a stain. And so it eventually cleans up uh, and essentially is just felt that's a little bit brown. So I can live with that. And it's pretty tough stuff, it's flexible. Uh, this is F5 felt and it is commonly used for weight wipers. And so it's a little different than the Monarch uh, original wipers. I'm not sure. I've heard that they've gone to this style anyway. Uh, that they're not supplying the multi-layer rubber felt, rubber felt, way wipers. But I haven't confirmed that with them. But this will be fine for my needs. Well, I've been doing quite a few projects over the last couple of months uh, since I put the way wipers in. And pretty, pretty wide variety of materials. Uh, a little bit of steel, a little bit of aluminum. Uh, some plastic even. So after all that work, getting swarf everywhere, we'll pull this off and see how good our way wipers were actually working. You know, it just occurred to me, you might actually want to see what I've been working on lately. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll look at the way wipers. All right, here's the first thing I ever parted off. I'm stuck out way too far, but I'm just knocking these threads off to make something else. Uh, it's high speed still, and I got it ground at an angle trying to take this off and not leave a pip. Uh, but it didn't work out, left a huge pip. So I uh, tried again with a chunk of table saw blade I cut out using an angle grinder and left one of the carbide teeth on there and left the bevel grind intact and cut really well. Had no problem at all. Uh, if you push too hard, it'll tend to wander a little bit, but uh, if I made a flat cut, uh, it would solve that issue. But it still left a pip, even with a finer or sharper uh, grind on there. So uh, I'll keep playing around with that, trying to figure it out. But it's cool to have um, the ability to make a parting blade out of a table saw blade. And here is some it's four inch 4140. And I just wanted to cut it, so I chucked it up and took a few passes on it, just to see how it would turn out. And testing the threading on the lathe. Uh, this is a 3816, turned out pretty well. And these are little standoffs I made. Didn't have to be pretty, just needed to Hold this uh, cooler tray off the TIG welder and um, let you use the flip out uh, holder for the TIG torch. And there's a diamond disc that I uh, bored out to fit on the end of my bench grinder so I could sharpen tungsten. This here is a brass uh, pour cup from the foundry and I just turned it down to make a little clamping uh, mechanism for a circle cutting jig for the bandsaw. And, uh, just basically a little plug with a taper and it engages on a 45 on the rod that uh, adjusts the radius of your circle and uh, it turned out pretty well. It sticks a little bit but uh, the sticking actually is kind of helpful and here is trimming down a telescope adapter for an astronomy camera. It's a little bit too long and it actually bumped something inside the telescope so I had to make it shorter so it would fully seat in and come to focus. And here's some raw video image of uh, hydrogen alpha spectrum. Um, so we're pretty narrow uh, bandwidth here. And then there is a stacked image. And here is a enhanced stacked image with some wavelet sharpening. And then add a little bit of color and you're good to go. Hydrogen alpha solar image. And here's a spacer. Um, this is a metric to SAE uh, little insert that I made. And I finally found a use for a Dremel because uh, I don't have a slitting saw or anything. Uh, some adjustable feet that I made uh, just to get set up for a weldment uh, for another guy. And then this here is a risograph. Uh, imagine a rotary screen printer. It is also the bane of my existence. Um, it has f 3 million copies on it, I think. And uh, here we're doing an ink change out. And the, uh, we're changing colors. That's why it was streaked. But it's normally taken apart with me digging my hands in here and some part of my body turning blue uh, from the ink. And here's some Delrin rollers that I made for it. This here is a 3D printed uh, circuit board adapter for the camera and a Raspberry Pi. 
and I'm just uh, right here I'm truing it up just to make sure it's nice and flat so that the circuit board sits on there um, this is all form one printer and so it was pretty flat but I was just making it super flat this here's a chunk of uh, aluminum from the scrap pile and I just very coarsely um, plasma cut it out face to side bored it to one inch and then held it on the lathe and flipped it around and then I uh, turned the OD down and this is for an extruder that goes on a clay mixer and so here I finished board and facing with the same boring bar and then so there it is all cleaned up you can ignore, ignore the holes they don't really matter um, I turned a little thread on the inside and fitted this uh, nozzle that screws in there seals with an o-ring um, and did that so we could extrude clay for filling up cartridges for this thing so this is a ceramic 3d printer um, it's based off the rep wrap Rostock design and I, I fully uh, custom designed every part in SolidWorks for this uh, 3D printer and the carriage is uh, it rides on Delrin bushings and I've got wipers on the top and the bottom to keep clay that accidentally gets on there from contaminating the bushings and there's a little idler down there I've got a shaft and two bearings and a spring-loaded belt tensioner and it works really smoothly and so there it is in action you can see I'm printing out a, a test cup which was uh, just a design that was on one of the SD cards that was lying around uh, I think that's one of the it's an artist Jonathan Keep um, he might have designed that cup pretty sure so anyway here's all the parts that I made and there's all the parts that were turned on the lathe and so these little washers right here uh, you get to see parting off um, after the first stop on here making a lot of smoke just using some uh, the cutting oil you get at Lowe's or Home Depot for pipe thread cutting it smells really nice it makes a cool sound right when it parts off to you Uh, here's the internal structure of that I didn't have a whole lot of room to do a real thick shoulder but it, it works well enough um, prevents the aluminum from getting dug into um, by the shafts and it also provides lateral support kind of widening that base of the shaft and so this is called the effector it's the part that rides around in the center that holds the extruder and so they're 3d printed and finished board on the lathe and so that, that's the great thing. It's kind of analogous to, you know, casting something out of iron and then finish boring it. Um, so I just made it a nice slip fit for the extruder. And this here's a clamp, and I just bored it slightly undersized so it would actually clamp and hold. Because uh, there's different nozzle heights um, that we use depending on the diameter of the nozzle. And so it needs to be easily changeable. So um, here's the shafts that are the three towers that... Uh, make up the corner of the machines there's just a thread on one end a shoulder on the other um, tap and then the other end had a little circlet retainer for the spring belt tensioner and this here's some delrin that was the bushings um, the top plates and the bottom plates I don't have a mill I don't even I don't have a CNC mill or anything so I sent the files and some mix six plate to my brother and uh, he put these on the Haas uh, he had just built this giant pallet uh, with another guy the week before I think so it wasn't too much trouble for him to throw it on there with a couple of vices and hold it and mill it all out for me and so he shipped it back and I didn't have any tooling to measure the inner diameter um, but he said it should be 10 millimeters within you know two tenths or so and so I turned to a perfect 10 millimeters on the lathe and at room temperature you could get it in there but if it was cool like 40 degrees or so it was a pretty tight fit so it ended up working uh, working out really well um, it all went together smoothly it operated perfectly the first time so um, I forget what we were doing with this video um, oh yeah yeah here we go looking at the tail stop all right so looking in here I don't see any intrusion no sort of grit or anything past the wipers There's a little bit of built up 
uh, swarf in front of this one, but nothing past it. There's one little speck. Looks like it's inside and just wiped off by hand. I'm not even sure that's swarf. No, it is. It looks like aluminum. So out of all that work, I got one tiny little speck of aluminum past here. So that ain't too bad. Feels nice and lubricated. I think the oil's draining through nicely. Uh, you can see a little puddle right here. So uh, a lot of the original scraping still intact. A little bit of wear on the, the leading edge. Um, but I'd say on the whole, there's a little bit of wear here. You can't even really feel the wear. It's just a more of an optical pattern. I'm sure if you put a tense indicator, you might see something on there. But I believe um, when they scrape these, they they scrape the middle low so that it wears down evenly or something. I, I remember reading a little bit about this, or either they scrape the front to wear because when you're when you're pushing forward on it, you tend to dig in the front a little bit. So they they scrape it slightly out of level so that over time it wears through level and then past level, so you get more lifetime out of it than if it was scraped perfectly to begin with. But all in all, I'll say I'm pretty happy with it, and I think I'll keep it just like this. And I know I really didn't cover how this comes apart, but it's pretty simple. A little plate here, you got to build your little spanner if you don't have one, or you can stick a couple of Allen wrenches in there and pry on it with a screwdriver or something. That right there pops out. Basically, there's a big Acme lead screw going through here, screws into the quill, and then uh, they unscrew, so just like that. And that's also how baby lathes are made. That's pretty much it, man. These two have split apart. If you need to take it that far, it's all kind of uh, cap head screws and a few pins and stuff you gotta knock out. Kind of a pain, but you can do it in an afternoon. And once again, sorry, didn't have a detailed disassembly on this. I actually did it uh, well over a year ago, uh, back when I was a tech, and just had a slow day in the shop and decided to do it there. Uh, this is before I even planned on filming this whole series. So uh, when we get to the carriage, we'll have a lot more detail. Um, it'll be uh, similar to the motor swap video. So I'll just film the whole thing and just cut it down to the bare highlights and try to keep it at a reasonable length of time. So in our next video, um, I think I'm finally gonna conquer the carriage. Um, everything on the lay has been done except for it. I've just been putting it off because uh, I'm having an internal conflict. Part of me says, well, everything's working fine, the clutches are good, the lubrication is working, why tear it completely apart? Just clean it up and be done with it. And then the, the other part of me is saying, tear it completely apart because you never know uh, what's been going on in there after 50 years. So, I'm still struggling with that, and hopefully I'll come to some sort of compromise with myself. So we probably only have a handful of videos left. Um, definitely the carriage and whatever I end up doing with that. Then there'll probably be one on maintenance, so changing all the belts, the oils, um, what kind of oil goes where, and um, then uh, one on operations. Uh, so going over all the dials and levers and switches, um, Try to include the taper attachment on that, setting it up. Um, I got a steady rest, so I can uh, do that and follow rest. So basically, operation of all the primary accessories that go to the lathe. And probably in that video, we might include some, I guess, some compa capacity tests. Um, you know, for aluminum, uh, some mild steel, and I have a pretty good chunk of 4140. I've heard these things in back gear have the strength to rip the compound right off the uh, cross slide. So um, hopefully we won't test that theory out, but uh, we'll, we'll try to put it through its paces and just see how well it does. And always, if anybody has any ideas or suggestions or things they'd like to see, just kick a comment down below and uh, I'll try to make it happen. Thanks. See you next time.